Hey everyone, it's Adam. I'm back with an update to Mix Effect. Mix Effect 2.3.0 was released on the App Store earlier today, and it brings support and compatibility for the new operating systems from Apple, including iOS 26, iPadOS 26, and macOS 26 Tahoe. Now these new operating systems were released earlier this week, and they bring with them a brand new user interface called Liquid Glass. Let's take a look at it on Mix Effect. So here we have Mix Effect running on the left hand side, and over on the right hand side, we have my other application, Route Effect, which controls Blackmagic Design video hubs and those ATEM switchers which support the video hub protocol, which is pretty much all modern uh, ATEM switchers today. But we're going to be focusing on Mix Effect uh, for this video. So, Liquid Glass basically, they've added um, these kind of like glassy little bubbles and user interface elements which kind of reflect, refract and reflect light behind them. So I didn't make too many changes. I didn't like liquid classify the entire user interface because again, I want the focus to be on the ATEM switcher and the content, not on kind of gee whiz, bang, um, fancy looking features. So, uh, but what I did do was I just kind of refined the interface so that it looks great on um, devices that are running the newer operating system. And if you're still running on the iOS 18, iPadOS 18, and macOS Sequoia and below, um, the app will pretty much look the same except for the some of the user interface workflow improvements that I'll be describing later. There's also a new application icon for Mix Effect. Uh, basically took the existing icons and converted them to work in Icon Composer, which is Apple's new application for designing icons, application icons. So you see a refreshed look to the Mix Effect and Mix Effect Pro icons, and they fully support the dark and tinted modes that are a feature of the new operating systems. Um, some improvements are in the import of streaming XML files. So you see here in streaming services, you can take the XML file from ATEM Software Control and import it into Mix Effect, and you'll see all those services right here. Um, but what's and you could also export those services to XML to the clipboard or to a file, and then import them back into ATEM Software Control. So if you make changes over in here, you can then import them to ATEM Software Control, and they'd be available. In um, <clears throat> Mix Effect 2.3.0, I added the ability to import streaming XML from the clipboard. So I'll just show you how I export it. I will export it from the clipboard and let's say, let's delete this one here. And I'm gonna import this from the clipboard. It's gonna replace all existing streaming services. And you see that um, it's just been added, the breakpoints one, it's just been added again. So this is a good way if you have <clears throat> multiple copies of Mix Effect and you need to copy the streaming XML file over. Uh, normally this information would sync between Apple IDs, but I found I needed to do this because I was doing a lot of testing on the simulator needed a way to kind of quickly copy um, the streaming XML files onto the simulated version of Mix Effect, um, a simulated iPhone or iPad that's running Mix Effect because those are not connected to my uh, Apple ID. But anyways, import streaming XML from the clipboard. Um, in terms of OSC feedback, I now support feedback for SuperSource box borders. This is the new feature that's supported on the constellations um, where you can have borders around your boxes. So I'll show you that real quick. So here's borders right here. I'll actually show the borders. So we see the borders for box two uh, right now is off, but I'll turn it on. You can see it's black, but I will like turn on now it's blue. You can see that like that. So I'll turn the box border off for this guy. But that now shows up in the OSC feedback. Audio mix options are also in the feedback. You do have to do a little digging trying to find a better way to kind of surface the audio mix options so you can identify the right ones. You can have the correct feedback show up in your uh, Stream Deck and BitFocus Companion buttons. Now, the big thing that I did was I improved the workflow for editing numeric values in the ATEM switcher. This has always been kind of like a pet peeve of mine uh, where in the past you would have to like click on this area here and then you'd have to like type or use your fingers to like select the text and then edit it. And then you'd have to hit the return button in order to commit that. Now it's very easy. You just hit it, a little window appears, the text is selected and you can just change it. So I'm gonna change this to 8.0 and you can either hit return to make it go and you can see the update happens automatically. What's also good is that it shows the min and the max value. So the min value and the max values that you can enter. So if I enter something that's out of balance, like 100, it will highlight the max value and say 
uh, in red and you say it's out of balance. If I hit commit, it will actually just bind it to the max value. And the same thing for min. So if I do negative 10, it will just set it to negative, oops, I actually clicked the cancel button. Negative 10, it will set it to negative nine. <clears throat> and um, you could always click this button to reset it to the default. So this is really great in Supersource. We're kind of like um, trying to control like box placement. So say box one, the position Y is five, seven, nine. But if I click this and I say like eight, you'll see that it moved me off screen like that. But I'll just click it back to 5.79, hit return and does that. And it really works really well on the iPhone because it brings up the keyboard and you can just type the thing in, hit return, and then the value will be committed. And this works everywhere where you see basically text fields with the orange text. So color generators, I said super source, downstream keyers over in the mask section, upstream keyers all, all around. Um, transitions doesn't really do stuff in dip, but the other ones for like wipe and DVE, those will be fixed as well, as well as the audio section as well. All these support uh, bringing up this user interface. So I really think this will really improve your workflow when you're editing uh, settings on the ATEM switcher using MixEffect. <clears throat> now, there's a bunch of other improvements. So I refactored the media page uh, a little bit. So kind of looks a little bit nicer to use. Uh, I have these little toolbar buttons for setting the super source background, you know, like this. In fact, actually, let's go back to media. Let's go back to this one and we'll change the background like this. So now it's using that background. I'll go back to this guy, I'll set it back to like this. I'll change this to like that. It would be great to actually see the actual image here, but um, you have to download the file from the ATEM and I just haven't implemented that feature yet, but maybe that will come in the future. Let's see, what else? The hyperdex section now has a little toggle between grid and all. So all shows a kind of like consolidated view and you can just switch between your hyperdex. Right now I'm using hyperdex two to record this video that I'm making right now. And you have grid modes where you can see all the hyperdex all at once. Um, improved toolbar consistency. I told you about that before. That's part of the liquid glassness of the application. There's improved detection of ATEM switchers on your network. So you'll see all the ATEMs that are on your network and you can just click, 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 and then just add this new one. Over in the video follows audio section, you will no longer see an additional ME that does not exist on your ATEM switcher. So for instance, in the previous versions, it should, would show for this constellation to ME, uh, an ME3 on ATEM Mini Pro, it's an ME2. And that's, uh, that bug has been fixed. Let's see. Uh, switcher panels now show the correct, um, <clears throat> we take a look at both ME's, the correct title, so ME2 and ME1, so you know ex exactly which one you are targeting. Make sure you do have show switcher panel titles enabled, otherwise they will not show up. I am thinking of a, adding a feature so that these always show up when you're using these particular uh, dedicated ME switcher uh, panels. Um, over in switcher settings, uh, the split audio, now you can click this. When you check this button, it will actually reflect the current state before you could click it and it would make the change, but you wouldn't see it until you kind of went back out and came back in. That bug has been fixed. Also in switcher settings for source labels, if you were to edit a source label, so if I change this to say 5D Mark V like this, uh, it wouldn't kind of like update over here and now that's been fixed. So a little quality of life improvements that I think you'll, uh, you'll probably notice for the better when you're using mix effect. Uh, now there's a bunch of bug, other bug fixes. So that I've updated and you'll want to take a look at the change log that I have over on the mix effect documentation site for a complete list. But the main thing again are, is the update to liquid glass and the numeric, um, numeric value editor. Um, that I've added to MixFact 2.3.0. I think uh, you'll really enjoy that particular feature. So uh, the past few months, I've been actually working on updates to all my applications. So not only have I updated MixEffect to 2.3.0, I've updated Route Effect to 1.1.0. And the big feature of that application is I added an OSC server. So now you can communicate with Route Effect to control your video hubs and your ATEM switchers that support the video hub protocol using things like 
BitFocus Companion and your Stream Deck. Other applications I've improved uh, and updated for the new operating systems include Message Filer. That's my application for macOS that helps you file messages very quickly in Apple Mail using just the keyboard. And Wipe My Screen, which is a fun little application for uh, cleaning your physical devices, so your iPads and your iPhones. And it has uh, nice shortcut actions for uh, framing your device screenshots. Now, one more thing about um, MixEffect running on uh, the iPad and the iOS is that this is going to be the last version that supports iOS 15 and iPadOS 15. So I actually had several devices that I was still using that could only be upgraded to the 15, iOS 15, iPadOS 15. But recently I noticed that because they've been running on like on 24 seven, um, the battery started to puff up. And this is a common problem with electronic devices that use lithium ion batteries is that over time, the batteries degrade, they get old and they start to release gases. And when they start to release gases, they start to puff up. And I don't know if you can see on this video, but the screen is trying to like lift up from here because the battery is puffed up. And this is happening on my iPad mini four, which is again running iOS, iPad OS 15 and my iPod Touch 7th generation, which was running iOS 15. So MixVec 2.3.0 will be the last version that will support those operating systems. And this is actually a good thing because now I'll be able to target at least iOS 16. Maybe I'll bump it up to iOS 18 because a lot of uh, iPads, modern iPads in use today can be upgraded to iPadOS 18. And there's a lot of improvements under the hood in Swift UI, in iPadOS and iOS that make um, writing applications such as MixEffect easier. And because I had to support all these old operating systems, I haven't really had the chance to update the application to take advantage of all these new features. Um, I could take advantage of some of them, but not all of them. So hopefully in the next uh, coming months, I'll be able to kind of work under the hood to make MixEffect more reliable, faster, more performant, and better than ever. But until then, I hope you enjoy MixEffect 2.3.0. Leave a comment down below if you have upgraded to iOS 26, iPad OS 26, and Mac OS 26 and are using MixEffect. Uh, there may be some bugs that I haven't caught. Um, let me know in the comments or send me a feedback message down below. And if this is your first time coming to the video, uh, coming to the site, definitely push that subscribe button and that like button. I always like to get new subscribers. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one. Check out my channel also for my videos on route effect message filer and wipe my screen. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.